Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. I'm often asked about a lesson, a couple of lessons that I posted about a year ago. Those lessons are called uh, Walking Over One Chord, D Minor. Jazz, walking bass. Students ask a whole bunch of stuff and they make a lot of assumptions. That, that's one of the challenges. They ask me, what scale am I using and what mode am I playing? And Jim, how do you practice the modes for that stuff? That's not how I think about it at all. I have heard the advice. Here's your D minor. And I've heard this advice. Just walk over D Dorian, do anything you want. Well, that's legal, but it doesn't sound that good normally. <laughs> uh, there's an awful lot of bad advice out there. I discovered by listening to the great players that they were playing little patterns. It was not random up and down the neck. No, it was very small little shapes, and then they would learn to combine those shapes. It's no different than us learning a language, a foreign language, or this language if we don't know it. We learn little bitty sounds, little bitty pieces, then little combinations, and then we string them together. I mean, I'm speaking to you today, and I'm truly improvising, but yet I'm speaking with a language with material that you have heard. Therefore, you can understand me. And I've got these words and these little uh, pieces of these sentences and words down so well that I can just plug them together without having to think about them. Well, did you hear what I just said there? I can just put them and plug them together without having to think about them. That demands a lot of practice. So there's no magical answer of here's what you do over D minor. You know that song, So What? Or another, there's other tunes like that. But here's what I do over this quote modal thing. I just don't think of it like that. I work on little bitty phrases that my physically I know how to play them. Then what you can do over that minor thing is, man, you can play your phrases and make music out of them. Let me demonstrate just a little bit here, okay? <laughs> I've played two phrases. There was one that I went. Sorry, that was the second one. Now that's a question, answer, question, ultimate answer sound. Again. Answer it. Play it again. that immediately gives some direction to our line. That sounds different than this. While there's nothing wrong with that tonality, it lacks a direction. If you really want to learn this stuff, you go look at Paul Chambers' first chorus on the song So What, so what by Miles Davis. Yeah, you can look it up online and see all the pitches if you want. I'd prefer that you get the recording and transcribe and write them down yourself. You go, oh my God, Jim, that's hard. Well, yeah, no joke. Get started. I'll give you a big hint. They're only quarter notes, and there's a lot of Ds. And that's not a joke. you got to learn to transcribe sometime. Just get into it. So let's look at a couple of these little phrases again. I sort of call them digital patterns sometimes because I think of a scale degree. One, two, three, five. Let's play that. Get your bass out with me. I'll get a little metronome going through my foot. One, two. is that you have to repeat little bitty parts so you get them down. But that's ultimately not what it's going to sound like. When I used to have to practice A, E, I, O, and U and the little word dog and cat and C, spot, run and all those little fundamental vocabulary things, well, that wasn't the way I was going to really speak, but I learned those parts. See, I don't, 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 half, 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 two, 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 say, 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 say. I don't have to say the words four times each now, but I recommend you play these phrases hundreds of times each. Now let's put them back together the way I had them. 
Let's practice some separate again. Get you, hey, by the way, I'm assuming you're playing your bass with me. You're welcome to just watch and go, hey, that sounds cool. I like it. But you're, why don't you get your instrument out and play with me? First phrase, a one, two, three, a four. Second phrase. The third one was the same as the first one. I think one time I did this, just, just an octave on it. And then the fourth phrase. Here they are together. I screwed up. Sure. Um, you don't need endless little phrases. You need about eight or ten that are really good, and then you just want to learn them so, so, so well that you can improvise. Check this out. I'm going to do a little improvisation here, but I'm not playing random stuff. I'm playing licks that I've worked on many times. Check it out. A one, two, mm. And then, of course, like anything else in music, y'all heard that, com uh, that, uh, that, that, that that phrase, the concept of theme and variation? I assume you have. What that apply, how that applies to most of us, not in classical music, it does there too, but most in jazz, and that is if you work on the theme, these little phrases, oh, so much that you have them down just perfectly and you get sick of them and then you do them more and more and more and you start to like them again. By the way, students say that all the time. Jim, how long do I need to practice this stuff? Well, until you love it and you don't want to stop. Then what happens? You automatically just start varying it a little bit. That's called improvisation. Check it out. I'll play a few more extra notes in there now. Hope I don't screw it up. But I'll start with some of those basic phrases then I'll add some different notes. Three, four. <laughs> Notice how if I'm not careful though, I start playing too many of those extra little notes and it loses its solidness. Now by the way, so far here I'm playing mostly just the root on the downbeat. And then when I start doing down, going a little bit chromatically, we lose that solidness of the root. So you want to practice these fundamental ones. Basically from the root, there's a bunch of combinations you can work out. Or simply go back to those two lessons. I laid out, I believe, eight combinations in one lesson. Yes, I did. And in part two, I laid out another eight uh, little, you know, phrases, not combinations, phrases for you to work on. And I illustrated them in phrases. So again, 